The Internet of Things or IoT as we know it has gained prominence with the rise and advent of internet. It is not far away that we would be seeing our lives being impacted very differently with the use of internet of things and its amalgamation with our lives. In this session we would be understanding how to implement IoT on cloud and explore its uses on different platforms like Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Services. So let us quickly go ahead and take a look at the agenda of today's session. We would be focusing on following pointers. We would understand the use case that we are going to implement in this session. We would understand how IoT services work on cloud that is Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure. And then we would go ahead and build an IoT application on these cloud platforms. So let us get started. Let me take uh, the example which like uh, which I built last week only. So it, it was, uh, uh, you know, kind of a proof of concepts which touches a real world problem and it has IoT and IoT Edge flavor in it. So let me explain the problem to you first. Now, uh, these uh, ice cream manufacturers or various soft drink manufacturers, right? Uh, what do they do generally is whenever uh, you are, let's say, a, a shopkeeper, right? And you are, um, you are, you start buying drinks from Coca Cola. So Coca Cola as a company will also give you a fridge in which you can keep the stuff, and they will also pay you rent for keeping a fridge of Coca Cola at your shop. But at the same time, their expectation would be that you will store only Coca Cola related inventory inventory from Coca-Cola company into your fridge, into that refrigerator. That doesn't happen. Uh, I mean, shopkeepers keep inventory from competitor also in the fridge, which was given by some other manufacturer. So that's one. So it's more like, let's say you have a car, you hire a, a driver, that's a driver, full-time driver that you have. Now, while you are in office or at some other place behind the back, he's, you know, running your car as a taxi without you even knowing it. So similarly, you have given that refrigerator to the shopkeeper. You are paying a rent to him for keeping that refrigerator in his shop because there is some logos and nice branding of your company. And your expectation is that the shopkeeper should be keeping only the products of your company into that refrigerator, but he is keeping products of the competitor or some other uh, products as well. So, uh, they wanted to ensure that this doesn't happen or they at least want to know uh, at what magnitude is it happening, who all are doing these kind of things. And then, then they want to kind of incentivize it that, okay, if you don't keep these kind of competitor products, then we will give you additional incentive. So they want to incentivize the process so that they can encourage these people to not have those competitor products in their refrigerator. That is number one. Number two is a um, uh, lot of times, like think, uh, think about yourself also, if you are going to a shop for buying, let's say soft drink, right? Now, every time you go there, you don't find the soft drink uh, is cool enough or it's, it's uh, pretty much on the normal room temperature. You might stop going to that shop for that soft drink. You would rather choose to go to some other place where you can find a soft drink, which is cool enough or cold enough for you. So a uh, lot of time what happens is these shopkeepers to save their electricity will, uh, they will, you know, uh, they won't turn on the fridge all the time. They will keep it on and off mode kind of a stuff uh, so that they can save on the bill. And that also has an impact on the overall sell of the uh, product. Or if you take some other example, uh, let's say uh, if you talk about a beer shop, right? You want to go there, you want to have that beer at the right temperature uh, so that it can be consumed immediately. Now, if if those things are not maintained, it is indirectly impacting your uh, sales. So they also want to monitor that, okay, how the, how the refrigerator is doing in terms of the temperature and all. 
the third one is uh, and this is uh, more towards the uh, ice cream and so i am talking the use case in pretty general because uh, solution we will discuss that is also kind of a generalized solution so uh, when i say generic or general what i mean is i am talking about the Uh, let's say alcohol uh, manufacturers or the soft drink manufacturers or the ice cream manufacturers so there is one specific thing in case of ice creams right if you recall you have a lot of uh, movable uh, refrigerators like the uh, amul or uh, quality walls all those things right you you see that small <clears throat> refrigerator on the wheels now that is also something which is actually given by the company so uh, that is something that can move as well so you might also want to track down that okay uh, where exactly my refrigerators are if i if i want to plot it across india if i'm talking only specific to india region and i know as per my inventory so far i have given out let's say 80000 refrigerator to different shopkeepers retailers or uh, or some other uh, people i want to have a heat map as in in what particular area region i have those refrigerators how much sales i am getting from that region versus the region where i have yeah so basically the the kind of insight that you can get is let say you are a sales head right and uh, in in this particular or rather i should draw a map let's say this is a region here you say the refrigerator count is high and your sales is also high in this region you say my refrigerator count is less and my sales is also less the point is it might help you to draw some correlation it might be totally inverse as well or it might not at all be correlated but today you don't have that kind of insight because you don't really know where your refrigerators are you might have given them to retailers but where they are sitting at the end of the day is not kind of visible to you or known to you and on top of all this the solution that you want to build you want it to be very very uh, cheap in terms of cost like you don't want to spend too much money on this particular system so this is a problem statement that we will see uh, how we can solve but before we get into that piece anyone has any questions around the use case i want to ensure that all of you understand the use case uh, very clearly so uh, so we will be only focusing on the location of uh, our devices or is there any other parameters which we will be covering in no we will be covering that uh, there should not be a competitor product inside the refrigerator we would be covering the temperature of the refrigerator we would also be covering the location part of it so there is a uh, uh, like ai involved in it but i'll keep it very very simple so don't worry about it the ai part because that is not going to be of the main focus for us uh, we are going to use ai through iot so we will talk more about the iot part but uh, i'll also uh, tell you where the AI, ai is involved because in this case of course if i have to uh, differentiate between my product and the competitor product right now um, if as a human i am sitting in front of the fridge i will use my eyes to look at the product and of course use my brain to make that classification in that in this case our eyes are going to be the camera and our brain is going to be a machine learning model which will do that for us so we will cover that as well one simple question mm -hmm. how do refrigerator sends data to our servers yeah we, we we will talk about it we will technical part we will talk about but from the use case perspective if you are asking then the there would be a device which would be installed in the refrigerator which is capable of talking over data so uh, if you uh, if you have heard of like lot, lot of cars uh, that is called telematics control unit basically so there are devices uh, like our phone also like my phone is actually for talking but there are devices which connect to the uh, internet using a sim or they can also use the wifi so if at all a shopkeeper has a wifi then it can take advantage of that otherwise uh, they can have a data card in it 
so uh, here the assumption is your wifi is capable of talking over internet either using wifi or using data card but we will also discuss towards the end if time permits we will discuss a scenario wherein we say you know what let's now talk about a device which can capture all these parameters but is not capable of talking over internet so we will cover that part as well yeah see recently in the world cup you might have seen it right uh, with respect to the field placement okay whenever the fielder moved from one space to other it used to show live so did they use a iot kind of technology or what was it rfid something like that uh i don't know exactly what they used uh yeah i mean uh, because there are multiple ways of doing this uh, in terms of uh, uh when you when you come to technology stack there are multiple ways of achieving that particular experience okay yeah but rfid also uh, yes. one of uh, rfid is yes. yes 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 that's correct okay thank you okay so any questions on the use case or i'll quickly summarize so what we are going to do we are going to build a system uh, wherein there are manufacturer for these cold drinks who are giving these refrigerators so each refrigerator is equipped with a device which can <coughs> send data over internet and this device has a camera this device also has temperature sensor humidity sensor let's say and the same device also has the sensor for uh, like uh, location sensor and all this this is the device capability now we have to build a system using which at the end of the day there should be some kind of report that can be created which will give me a picture in terms of how much of my inventory how much of my refrigerator capacity is actually going for the competitors or inventory which does not belong to you so if i have a refri if i have 20 refrigerators in 20 refrigerator how much percentage of the inventory is there which belongs to some unidentified uh, you know manufacturer let's say how much of it is that belongs to me kind of that is one second how is the temperature of these refrigerators are there refrigerator whose temperature is like pretty high or are there temp uh, refrigerators who are maintaining their temperature below a certain point and so on and third is about location of course okay so shall we go ahead yes so this one actually um, i i built it on raspberry pi b plus model so what i will do is um, i first i'll uh, i should have some area yeah. this is the one uh basically where that flow is actually so if you are looking at this particular slide right now what is happening right now so we uh we had a, a pi camera on the raspberry pi which we mimicked as the uh camera which is on the fridge door so essentially now think of it if you have a refrigerator right if i keep on taking pictures inside that refrigerator i have a refrigerator in this i have various let's say drinks or whatever you call it these uh, different bottles or fruity maza okay now unless if if i have a fridge which is closed and i'm continuously taking pictures every uh, one minute let's say one picture every one minute it does not make sense because nothing is changing inside that fridge unless a door opens and closes that is the only time the stuff inside the fridge can change when the door is closed once you have done the once you have put in the stuff until the next time you will open the door and try to take something out or put something in nothing is changing inside the fridge so there is no point taking continuous images you would unnecessarily be wasting your memory wasting your uh, compute unnecessarily it's always going to be that still uh, image so here what we did is we said uh, okay so we will take there would be a camera but rather than continuously capturing images the camera should start capturing the image as soon as the fridge door opens up 
and uh, it should stop capturing the image after the fridge door closes but this can you can make it okay after the fridge door is closed i want to capture it uh, you know even like until 1 minute later than that event because after that also for 1 minute i want to see the final state of the fridge but all that is something which is device can be programmed with and uh, i'll show you that piece in the code also like quickly but the idea is that okay so rather than continuously keep on taking images generating the still data i am generating i know that okay in this particular case in case of refrigerator things change only when opening and opening the fridge door event occurs even then it is not guaranteed right somebody might have just opened it looked at it and closed it but one thing is for sure if at all anything will change it will change only when the door is open then only stuff will come in or go out so right uh, uh, changes or the power goes off and then which could impact the items in the fridge no so basically right now when i'm take i'm saying camera what i mean is camera is there for identifying the competitor products so you have we are talking about temperature which is a temperature sensor that is anyway sensing the temperature then we are talking about the very first use case was that in this fridge even though it is coca cola fridge but i am putting pepsi here i want to ensure that there is no pepsi in the fridge if it is given by coca cola so this camera is only capturing the images and trying to find out if at all there is any image of a product which does not belong to me so basically a violation of some rules exactly exactly so uh, for that uh, you can keep new so right now i let's say there is no pepsi inside the fridge fridge has everything which is related to coca cola uh, all the coca cola product like thumbs up lim kind so on now somebody if a pepsi has to go in for that somebody has to open the fridge and put the pepsi inside now what we are saying is while the fridge is open and closed so that is where here fridge open events occurs here the fridge is closed now before that while it is just closed right i need not to continuously keep capturing images and try to see for competitor products because when the first open close would have occurred i would have done that anyway now things will change only when i will open it again to put something inside or take something out of the fridge so this is the window in which i will capture images and analyze them even i can extend it a little bit i can say okay even after the door is closed take one more minute like 60 more seconds to keep on taking pictures but after that just don't do it until the next time it opens up again is that clear yeah okay we have to set an alert also uh, for uh, door to be closed in a specific time like 5 minutes and maybe there, there's a there's a time when you know door has a problem right many times open door and all so so maybe door doesn't close properly and you don't get alert yeah door is properly closed so yeah yeah, yeah absolutely so all those see at the end of the day here everything that you have to do here is more on how smart you can make your device right now uh, let's say in your case what you are talking about as long as this device is capable of sending the telemetry data about door status in the cloud it is so easy to do exactly what you are saying so as long as my device is sending a telemetry message in which it is saying let's say door status and in the door status it is saying open versus closed now if i have to write a simple rule in the cloud saying that you know what if the door is open for like 5 minutes continuously i want to send a alert it is a very easy but whole thing comes down to my device should have that capability and what do i mean by that that when you have the door and when you close the door there should be a small sensor so whenever door opens it should sense it whenever door closes it it should sense it and then it should send it to the main board in the device itself which is actually doing the transmission to the cloud but yeah if it can do that then of course this is also something you can add on top of it 
Does it do any image processing kind of once the image is taken? Yes, it does. So basically, the case we are talking today is not just IoT. The case we are going to discuss today is IoT Edge and IoT. Uh, I think I I spoke about IoT Edge last time, right? Uh, did I talk about IoT Edge? I have already given you guys introduction, I guess. Yeah, just it it was an introduction. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So uh, yeah, so today the. example that we are talking about has iot edge and iot together and uh, that's what we will use but uh, i'll tell you why iot edge is here it's not really needed but i'll uh, talk about it okay so now let's try to get into the solutioning like what all should we do so one thing we understand that okay i need to have certain device capabilities wherein device should have temperature sensor device should have a camera which can take images and uh, device should have some location sensors and all that is my hardware capability what we're going to focus on we we we're going to assume that okay my hardware my device has those capabilities in terms of hardware now what do i do to make a solution which can you know uh, make use of these hardware capabilities and give me what i want at the end of the day so my end goal is a power bi report dashboard let's say which has some nice dashboard uh, showing me stuff that i'm looking for in terms of graphs or the uh, charts of temperature and so on so what should be the let me now uh, let's make it a little bit interactive let's uh, start from here wherein i have a device and we will go down in detail of each uh, uh, layer but first i want to start from a very high level so the question to you guys is if device is my left most layer let's say from device and we are right now talking about azure right so <coughs> uh, let's say device is capable of talking mqtt now what should be the first person on the cloud who would be talking to the device API what gateway? what would be the service name with this service name sorry api gateway no iot hub iot hub is the right answer yes so the the service the azure service which is uh, uh, or i should say this way the the managed service offered by azure for the iot scenarios is called iot hub if i talk the corresponding aws terminology then there it is called aws iot core but in case of azure it is the name of that managed services iot hub so whenever you have to create from the portal you will create a instance of iot hub okay so uh, this is the azure portal we have uh, we have uh, seen it before as well so like i was saying the service that is responsible or not responsible i should not use the word responsible but the service which is offered by uh, microsoft azure to take care of iot scenarios which actually uh, and when i say the uh, word take care right it's not like only you if you don't use iot hub you can't build iot scenario you can still do it but you will end up writing so much of custom code because what iot hub is doing it is actually encapsulating so many things which are required in absolutely every single iot implementation so it is just taking care of all the core things and giving you the uh, end points where you can customize things that that can be customized but all the core common functionality is something which is black box for you so this is the first place and to make a iot hub you what you have to do is we discussed it last time also when we were talking about i think week 3 so you go to create a resource and in the create a resource you come whenever you will create a resource this is a place it will take you now 
and in the azure portal when you come over here like in aws you see you will get a category and under that you will see the list of different uh, services for that category right in the aws console here also you have a similar picture just that on the left hand side is where you have the uh, kind of category and on the right hand side is where you have list inside that category so if i select internet of things it will tell me that these are the all things i have right so i can directly search from here i'll say iot hub and then you click on iot hub you click on create you provide the name of the iot hub you select the data center and the resource group and then you click on create so that's how you can simply create a iot hub now let's say i have a iot hub so which means and what does having the iot hub means iot hub, having the iot hub means is now i can communicate with the device both ways i can have cloud to device message which is flowing from iot hub to device and i can have device to cloud message which is flowing from device to cloud that is one now uh, can you guys tell me uh, uh, if i have a, a, you know a very high throughput or i have lot of messages coming in can you tell me one of the option that i have in azure which can give me a really like a, a streaming messaging system wherein i have a lot of messages coming in so for that what should i be using here and if if i give you the same example that i think i gave you while explaining this it's like uh, uh, you want to build a express way not just a national highway or a state highway so if i want to build a express way in azure wherein i know the flow of message is going to be extremely high what should be this component service bus service bus is your state highway what is your express way it is your event hub okay so again uh, i'll just again uh, tell you have event hub you have service bus and uh, in both of them you you have like both of them are messaging systems but event hub is built for providing you high throughput okay so we will go with event hub and why are we going with event hub because we are when we are building this iot scenario let's say i'm talking about uh, 100k devices like i'm saying they have 100k refrigerators in the market and that's what the target is this is not the only factor that you have to consider at the end of the day what you need to find out you need to find out okay how many messages per minute or per second are gonna hit my iot hub how do you calculate that for calculating that you need to know the total number of devices of course that is one second you need to know how many messages what is the frequency of messages from each device so like every let's say a device is sending one message every one minute and i have a total of 100k devices so every minute i am expecting 100k messages right so that's how you and sometimes not sometimes actually in mostly all the cases uh, you will end up having different type of devices so in this case only let's say tomorrow uh, they say you know what out of these 100k devices 20k are legacy ones i can't have the same device which is getting fitted in the remaining 80k uh, to be fitted in the uh, in those 20k devices because of their capabilities those are absolutely legacy devices it can't work with them so i have come up with another version of device and let's say that another version of device is uh, not uh, as powerful as this uh, uh, as the one which is working with remaining 80k what does that mean that means it might not have uh, that much of uh, you know uh, battery power compute whatever so that's why for those 20k devices the message frequency is uh, uh, one message in one hour or one message in 30 minutes or 5 minutes but it is different than the rest of 80k devices so you might have and you will definitely have these variations if not at the starting in future that will come because when the new version of that device comes that you are using today then of course it will get replaced in some of the systems or any new uh, vending machine which is coming in will now have this new device put in so you have to calculate what is 
what is the messages that i am looking for that is going to hit my iot hub which is called device to cloud messages so how do you calculate it of course you have to take care of uh, number of devices and multiplied by frequency of messages from device so and when you say frequency of messages from device like i said you have to consider if there are multiple uh, types of devices then you have to uh, consider the uh, frequency accordingly and uh, because here we are uh, we are building a system for high throughput so we are using the event hub there now one more thing i told you guys uh, earlier which was that uh, just yeah i told you that when you create a iot hub then there is a built in endpoint which is a event hub only and you can use routing so any anyone uh, who remembers the routing concept we talked about about the routing in iot hub do you guys recall the example of uh, business class versus economy class uh, uh, check in process i mean uh, uh onboarding process right so what is routing can anybody explain quickly yeah it's basis on the priority hmm so basically if you if you have to ensure that certain types of messages are being processed at a higher priority then you can define those routes in the iot hub and what do what does that mean let's say i define a, a route for service bus then there would be one more arrow coming over here and a rule based on which it would be routed but that is not the case with us i just wanted to you know kind of uh, give you guys a revision on that concept so now i have a event hub now messages are coming inside the event hub but then what there has to be somebody who has to read those messages from the event hub now let's leave it as fill in the blanks and let's go to that final destination so finally what i want to do is i want to have my data shown as a report and that is a power bi dashboard so i want this power bi dashboard to be prepared for power bi to prepare a dashboard it needs to fetch that data from a data store so i need to define a data store in which i have to put this data now let me give you guys a option let's say i have a sql i have a cosmos which is no sql right document db so in this case wherein i'm saying that okay the volume of my data is going to increase over the time uh, and uh, my query pattern is kind of very well defined as in i'm always going to query based on some specific things so which one should i pick should i pick a, a sql database or should i pick a no sql database it's no sequel uh, okay. we have a defined query yeah. yeah you know where to put the blocks uh, i think fast access if your query is simple and complex and it's not going to change then you can perfect great and one more thing <clears throat> just uh, i mean keep it in back of your mind even if uh, let's say on the uh, uh query things and all and performance and all you find that okay both are going to be same just assume and uh, you are go uh, you have a argument that you know what my data is not going to grow over the time so in this case of course it will grow because it is a iot scenario but let's say you are talking about some other scenario wherein you say okay you know what if this is my data growth it it's going to sustain after a point whether it is sql or no sql now because it is going to sustain and i am going to get exact same performance then the uh, final debate is coming to the cost of course because that's the only factor remaining so if you are running your document db or the cosmos db with the least possible uh, <clears throat> configuration is still it will be cheaper than the sql because there you have to create a server so just wanted to uh, call that out so sorry i didn't want to delete that one so here we have this 
power bi and before power bi i am putting no sql what is the no sql uh, service name of uh, azure cosmos yes absolutely so we have a cosmos here now my power bi is basically pulling data from cosmos but i have to put this data in the cosmos i have to put these messages in the cosmos let's uh, add the other factor also to this so uh, from the device i am getting two types of messages one is my pure sensor data right so uh, when i say my sensor data it has just uh, actually let me show you that so that then you guys uh, will get a better picture i would have loved to show you the end to end thing working but because that's a raspberry pi and also it won't be that clear but i will actually uh, we will walk through the design and then we will actually see things which are there in azure in terms of uh, data or the report which uh, which is there so we'll go through that what i want to show you is i want to show you the cosmos tv and there i will show you that how it is laid out and then we will try to fill in the blanks between event hub and cosmos tv so uh, let's see what or uh, how we want to be uh, how, how we want the data to be present in the cosmos and then what all do we need to do between the event hub and cosmos to uh, reach there so this uh, inventory uh, mon is the uh, cosmos tv now let's go to data explorer so uh, yeah let's uh, take a minute here also so that you guys will be aware of this as well so right now i am in the cosmos db and again when you have to create a cosmos db it's uh, gonna remain same wherein you click on create a resource you type uh, cosmos here and you get the azure cosmos db you click on it and then you click on create and after that uh, you provide the information in terms of the uh, name resource group and so on okay now going back uh, there and once you have your account uh, cosmos db created this is the view that you will be presented now in this view uh, if you see there is something called data explorer so if you click on data explorer this is the place wherein you can create the container and the databases so what i have done right now i have a inventory uh, database inside that i have two containers one is camera feed and other is sensor data now what is the difference between the two let's open one of the message uh, if i go down yeah if you see the message over here so there is a message type called analytics and it has a tag name which is so all all this is not important for, uh, for discussing the design part right now but uh, i'll quickly walk you through it will help us in the second part uh wherein so what is happening here is under the camera feed so uh, think of it this way i want to go and in my cosmos db i want to create two containers c1 let's say and c2 <clears throat> now the message which are coming in from the device are of two types one of the one is analytics so in the analytics message uh, the basically there would be a type defined inside the message itself so either it will be analytics or it will be a uh, sensor data or device data i don't recall what did uh, sensor data so if you guys see under the sensor data you have the messages of type sensor data in the sensor data message it's fairly simple you have humidity you have temperature of course the device id and uh, we are also talking about lat long here the raspberry pi that uh, i used it doesn't have of course a location sensor so it, there is no lat long but 
with the device that we are right now talking about it will also have let long so any sensor data from all the sensors and uh, for the question asked about the door uh, if door is left open right if i have a sensor about that then is door uh, door status open close all that will be part of it so i have this sensor data and then other type of messages analytics message in that message what i am getting i am getting the tag i am getting the image name i am getting the type type is analytics device id and the probability so uh, what is happening here from my camera i have taken the image after taking that image i have run some analytics on top of it that is where iot edge will come into play uh, we'll talk about that design also but right now think of it as a black box your camera took a image after taking that image it sent that image to analytics this is all happening within the device now from that analytics the device gets back whether it is uh, so if for this poc purpose i have trained maza and minute made apple as my company product everything else should be undefined every other product should be undefined now when it looks at it it says that okay i think it is maza and what is the probability that it is it is maza according to me and it tells you that okay i'm talking about i am inside the refrigerator one and uh, what is the other thing it will do is what is this image name so basically if i have to retrain my model right tomorrow let's say today my uh, this is the first version of the model it's like your brain right so the same example i gave last time the first time you uh, show somebody okay this is a apple and let's say now i know okay this is how the apple looks like but the image that you have shown to me is of apple of color uh, of red color now tomorrow somebody shows me a image of a green apple but i don't know oh, that that is also apple because i was trained on a red apple image so then i have to it has to be retrained when i look at the image i might say oh, you know what i don't know what this fruit is then you will tell you know this is also apple so very similarly let's say this particular image which i am calling as maza i mean when i say i am calling as maza the model is telling me it is a maza it might not be a maza it might be a very similar product with a very similar packing launched by a competitor it also has a mango on it and so on and it's very close in terms of how it looks like so that's why the module or the analytics model is thinking that it is maza but actually it is not how do we ensure that my analytics module is now trained so what i have to do is i have to go back and retrain it for retraining it i need to have the exact image to which it said it is maza because then i will take that image and tell this guy you know what this is not maza this is i don't know if fruity and maza are competitor or not but let's say they are so i'll say you know what this is fruity not maza i will train it with that way but again for that i need to have a hold of this image which is taken by the camera that is in the refrigerator now can i send that image through iot message anybody i i might not have discussed it i mean i'm not sure if i did but uh, anybody want to take a shot at it can i send that image here if you see it's a image name there is no image data in this message so if i would have wanted to send that image data to the cloud can i send it as part of a message as part of this iot message like the message which is coming in here device to cloud message can i do that yes sir okay so here is the thing uh iot hub allows maximum message size of 256 kb your message which you are device is sending to iot hub cannot exceed this so 256 kb is the maximum size okay yeah. now image that my camera is taking is like 1 mb let's say so of course i cannot send it through device to cloud message but, but then there has to be a different way uh we'll talk about that way but there is another thing we should think about it uh, think about here now the image that you are sending right 
when are you going to use this image when will i use the image that i'm sending to i uh, to the cloud uh, to match uh, whether my competitors product is not there uh, to retrain basically right yeah. so when i'm doing reporting if you if you look at this right my reporting is happening from cosmos okay and in the cosmos you can clearly see i don't have a image data i only have a image name now the reason i mentioned this is that see this image that i am getting actual image that i am getting not just the name the actual image data wherever i want to keep it i want to keep it at a very something which is uh, very very cheap in terms of storage because i am not doing uh, i am i am not going to read it very frequently it is i am going to read the images only when i want to retrain and let me uh, tell you this in most of the real world scenarios right you are not going to retrain on a daily basis so the way it works is you have deployed a model now that model is doing analytics it is identifying it is saying okay this is maza this is foodie this is some sublim ka so on with a certain probability and this is functioning you wait for 30 days to capture lot of data or you say okay whenever there are 15000 new records that has come to me i will do the retraining so that's how you 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 won't you won't do retraining every day you will do it after a specific time period or after a specific set of new data has come to your system in either case what i'm trying to say is so it's more like you are saying okay keep giving me the images keep giving me that data and retrieval would be once in a while now that once in a while could be every 15 days once every 30 days once every 10 days once kind of thing so uh, this is not something which i'm going to run queries law of i performance and so on right uh, so i i want to store wherein i can store it which is very cheap and wherein i can just load all the images uh, whenever i need to uh, performance is not that a big concern for me right now the store over here we want to use is a big data store because they are cheap they are not uh, uh, you know uh, it's uh, it's not something that is my it's a image data absolutely image data so uh, i i want to keep it in a big data store and in case of azure i will put it in the blob and <clears throat> it's gonna cost me really dirt and i'll show you i'll show you that uh, cost computation it would be dirt cheap to put this in the blob now what essentially happening over here is that image is actually stored in the blob and the name of that image is put in as part of the message so tomorrow when i have to retrain right i know that this is the name of the uh, image and this image was referred as maza at a probability of 0.60 so if i go to the blob uh, that i have created there you will see all these actual images are present so in the storage account again how you create a storage account very same fashion go to create a resource type in a storage account it will give you it will search for you as your storage account and go ahead go ahead and create it by providing the name and so on the resource group and the region and once the storage account is created this is the view that you will get now in the storage account you can put blob Uh, files tables and queues here we are focused on the blob so i'll go ahead and select the blob here i have already created a image blob if i recall it yeah images so i go ahead and click on images and here you will see that uh, uh, there would be lot of see all these images which are taken by camera on which analytics is done are eventually coming over here and sitting in this blob and in every message i have the name of the image so if i go to the next message right the name would be different and this one if you see this is unidentified it means it is saying 
this particular product is not something that belongs to you and i can say that with a surety of 0.98% uh, probability so now if i think there should be some messages for uh, yeah like this one is saying i think it's a minute made apple so these are depending on what is in front of camera it is capturing it it is sending it to analytics uh, which is a black box for now from there it is getting whether it thinks this tag name is the kind of not kind of tag name is a prediction from the analytics and probability is a probability of surety that analytics model is saying about his prediction and then like i said the image that is taken from camera that image has been uh, sent to the blob and that is sent to the blob not through iot but it is sent to the blob directly when i say directly what i mean is directly over internet that is again we are doing in iots so that also i'll show you but if i come back over here so what we are saying is that uh, let's rub this out from the device we have another insert which is happening into the blob and what is this insert this is the image now coming back here so in the event hub essentially there are two types of message coming uh, one is of type analytics another one is of type sensor data what i want is i want that if a message is is of type sensor data it should come to the con um, container 2 if the message is of type analytics it should come to container 1 what can i put in between which can help me achieve this uh again we have messages flowing in and those messages can be from of two types irrespective of the device right uh, at the end of the day every message has a property called type and in against that type property you will either have sensor data or uh, uh, camera feed as your value now if the value is camera feed that should go to c1 container if the value is sensor data it should go to c2 container any idea how can you do that or tell me if you if you had to do the same thing in aws what would be the service you would use anyone will it be logic apps uh no although it can we done with that but we won't use that and i'll tell you why we have couple of options here one like you said it logic apps it could be azure function which is like your uh, lambda function in aws or it could be stream analytics so i would go with stream analytics and the reason for going with stream analytics is because again uh of its speed it is meant to deal with that stream data it is meant to be really quick and what really i am going to do in stream analytics a very very simple thing let's have a look at it so again in the stream analytics uh, it should be here okay so uh, i said that to fill in this blank i'll use stream analytics now let's go and simply have a look what is there in the stream analytics when we say stream analytics and that is visible from here also right if in between i have a stream analytics sitting which means i have message coming in here and finally in the output my message should either go i either go here or go here so how many outputs do i have for this stream analytics how many possible outputs do i have i have two possible outputs right it could be either a analytics container or it could be a sensor data container when it comes to the input i have only one input over here so uh, if you see similarly you have input output that uh, you can define but main thing is the query part that i want to show you wherein we are saying that 
if so the two outputs uh, will look at it and uh, if you look at the analytics and cosmos output the only difference that is there between the two is the container name in the cosmos one would be the sensor data and the container name in the analytics one would be the camera feed so we are saying that you know what if the message if the type property is like sensor data then send it to cosmos and if the type property is like analytics then send it to analytics so very very simple nothing fancy over here i'll go ahead and uh, stop or you know what let's uh, uh hi yeah, um, yeah. this is weird uh can you relate this to the aws because we have not gone through the azure because i i was a gc i was in gcp class so like it's a little bit difficult to understand the terminology in azure because i never gone through the azure this i think this class is for uh, everyone i think that's why i got the invitation okay okay not only for the azure students that's, okay that's my understanding so uh thank you yeah let me actually go to the AW, i'll go to the aws portal so basically if the basic architecture that we are talking about here right so here instead of uh, or let's first quickly complete this path because we are at the end of the last component so in case of uh, uh analytics so all we are doing is we are saying that okay you know what this particular feed one output is for camera feed other output is for sensor data and then we have written a query which will direct the messages to either sensor data or to the camera feed so this is uh, we did a very uh, one to one mapping for our scenario from the azure perspective like if you have to build this solution in the azure how will you do it now if you have to build the similar solution in the aws then instead of iot hub there you are going to use aws iot core so you all of you have gone through aws iot core no i think no no it's not completed in uh, aws not covered in aws okay so uh, okay so conceptually at least i'll tell you because uh, uh, from azure perspective we covered the iot as part of the sessions that we had but uh, it is uh, very similar let me log in so that uh, you guys will be able to okay so in case of aws if you think uh, if you look at it right under internet of things this iot core if i go to the iot core there that is where you can actually do your uh, device registration and you can uh, all the communication so this part right where in your device is talking over here this part is something which is taken care by uh, aws iot core now if i go to manage i think i should have some devices yeah so uh, basically <clears throat> just to give you guys a very brief introduction about it uh, about the aws iot uh, how it works uh, like so you you do a device registration here as well and then the you have to have a certificate for device authentication so uh, the so for cert based authentication either you can have your own certificate or you can have a certificate generated by aws so if you go to the secure under this you have certificate and policy so at the end of the day i'm not going to go in details because that's not the purpose of this session to go into a uh, iot core details but it is more to give you guys a idea about the scenarios on iot and the design across it so uh, what you have to do is you create a certificate you create policy what are policies policies are like let's say i have a device which cannot receive the 
uh, which does not have capability to receive a cloud to device message now i want to ensure that because device hardware does not have that capability nobody from the cloud should even be able to push that message so one is that device hardware doesn't have capability but my cloud environment is still allowing to send the message and then it is getting rejected because of uh, because device doesn't have capability instead of that i want to say you know what i don't even want to allow it at the cloud level itself so in the policies if i go to policies in the policies you can define what exact things you allow a particular uh, for a particular device so if you think uh, if you look at it right here this policy is saying that i to whatever uh, device this policy will be attached to that device would be allowed to connect that device would be allowed to subscribe I I assume you guys would have gone through MQTT as part of uh, uh, communication related Hello? stuff. Yeah. Y yes, we got. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, these are the subscribe and publish are actually MQTT subscribe and publish over here. So your device is a client, and your IoT core is your MQTT broker. And whether you want your device to be able to subscribe or publish is the uh, a uh, permission you want you will be giving as part of this policy so essentially uh, you this is how you do device registration like i'm sure it it won't give you an insight but at least uh, uh, there is a certificate for every device there is policy for every device and based on that policy if in a policy for a device i have said that this device should not be able to subscribe i have said uh, iot subscribe denied then if that device if the code from that device is trying to create a subscription that will fail that won't be allowed because the policy does not allow it that is one piece now you let's hear the hardware hardware uh, device has to be registered here and, uh, yes absolutely absolutely that is uh, and these things are very similar in uh, whether it is aws core or iot think of it this way right if your uh, if those devices are not registered here it means uh, i'm saying that okay you know any device can connect to my system so it's like giving you username and password right so whenever you register into a device uh, into a website right you create a username and password for yourself you provide your information maybe first name last name phone number and so on and then you uh, create a password so that's how your account gets created now if i have not created a account i won't be able to log into that website <clears throat> similarly in this case if you want to connect which means if you want to log in let's let's compare login uh, connect with the login if you want to log in here you have to have a account to create a account you also need to provide certain information what is that information that information is what is your device id that information is if at all you have your own certificate give that certificate information so if you simply go to manage right and if i say create a new device uh, create so yeah uh, also another thing that uh, in aws iot terminology um, like iot terminology device is always referred as thing so i'll go ahead and like create a single thing which means create a single device i give it some random name and you can have types right so let's say i have a manufacturing unit in, in which i have devices which are coolant there are some devices which are uh, boilers and so on so you can uh create types and tag your devices to the types and uh, uh then i say next now here you have to add a certificate to your device so either you can have a certificate created by aws or you can have your own certificate or if you skip this right now then until you attach a, uh, your device to a particular certificate you won't be able to communicate so at the end of the day you have to have a certificate certificate for your device so that's how your complete registration process is and then certificate has policies also attached to it so your uh, so your uh, certificate has two things certificate will have devices 
and it will also have policies so all the uh, all the devices which are attached to this particular certificate will have all the policies applied that are attached to the certificate so that this is kind of device registration how it works in aws now that is uh, fine use uh, once device is registered of course now i can my device can talk to aws what about the part which is uh, oops. what about this part right which is happening right here so for that and i think you guys should be able to get that real quick because you have gone through uh, this already but let me cancel it i want to come back here now here what you can do is if i go to act i can uh, any input message which is coming in i can send that message to some specific output so i click on act here and i can create rules basically now uh, oops sorry so i have one rule i'll show you so basically what this rule is right now whenever there is a message which comes with a temperature higher than a particular limit then it will send a email so i am using simple notification service so yeah let's have a quick look so that then you can easily relate to the other rule we will talk about so in the uh, all of you are uh, aware with sns right you you guys have covered it as part of your course sns right. yeah okay so uh, basically in the sns create a topic and then what we are saying is whenever i receive any message on the so uh, at the end of the day every device is like i said mqtt client right so when a device is sending the message essentially it is doing a publish so in the and when it is doing a publish it would be doing a publish to a topic so all we are saying is every message which is coming to a particular topic i want to send that message to the uh, as a email so here we simply created a action in the action we say that okay you know what this is the target this is and the i am role and then uh, that's it now based on this let's go ahead and try to create a new rule now what all you have to do for creating a new rule it's fairly easy in our case the case that we are discussing we are saying that i want to send these messages into two separate parts so basically i want to send message into c1 and c2 depending on what is the message type for that i can have a rule here which can say that you know uh, all the messages in which where type is equal to analytics so it will filter out the messages of uh, analytics type now when it comes to add action so in the add action i will select the dynamo db uh, dynamo db dynamo db is the no sql db of uh, aws right yes okay perfect and uh, <laughs> please forgive me i am not uh, so i am uh, azure guy aws yeah, i have gone i have worked with iot but very limited part of it so i might keep asking you guys some of those aws related stuff but anyway so here you can have um you can create a rule and based on that rule you can put the message in the no sql uh this way so what we are saying here is if i have to just translate it right if i come back here and i say okay this is a device this is aws iot so messages are coming in here now here i have created basically two rules r1 and r2 in the r1 i am saying the message type is equal to is equal to analytics in the r2 i am saying message type is equal to is equal to uh, sensor data and in the r1 the destination i have given is uh, dynamo uh, db and here also it's dynamo db so but then this is where i have that uh, routing uh, not exactly routing but kind of for your uh, uh, filtering happening based on the 
type of the message and you have variety of options like uh, in the previous one the existing rule that i was showing right uh, that is for sns push notification so that one is more about uh, uh, like triggering a email based on if at all you are receiving a message with a certain uh, parameters and you want to trigger a immediate alert in terms of email or sms you can easily do that from here you can create a action for sending this push notification and uh, then you can put a rule in the when i say rule i mean the criteria wherein you can say you know what whenever temperature is more than this humidity is more than this and so on blah 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 that is when you have to send the message so let's say in the same sensor it can capture a door open duration so now i can simply say if there is a message which is of type sensor data and the total door open duration is greater than 5 minutes then i want to trigger a immediate push notification so i can do that from here and these are the other options that you have so i think the kinesis stream is nothing but the stream analytics uh, uh, like the counterpart for that uh, in aws but these are various different options and uh, it also has a uh, no that one is actually different that's not the uh, yeah that one is a different thing so uh, these are the various actions that you can take so uh, you have all these available and you can plug it in direct to the topic on which you are receiving messages in the aws iot and that message will be accordingly routed to the destination so if i have to achieve this like i said here you will simply create two action rules and your action would be the no sql db and in your rule your criteria would be in one case your type would be analytics and in another case your type would be uh sensor data i think i, I should have this uh... so this is uh, basically uh the aws device wherein you whenever you are sending the message you would be sending it to a particular uh, you would be publishing it to a particular topic and uh, so uh, like i said right you you have to have those certificates and uh, uh, your configure credentials is nothing but the certificate so uh, don't worry about the code piece and all just want to show you this thing wherein yeah so right now i am publishing the message to a topic uh, which is demo topic and that's what you were seeing uh, in the in the rule wherein the previous rule that we had wherein we were saying that uh, you know i want to uh, raise a alert for everything which is coming on demo topic like in this case you had this select star from demo topic so that demo topic is the place where the device is publishing the message any questions so far so like now uh, for those who have not gone through azure at all at least you guys are able to correlate as in that uh, with aws how will you build this part the part which is here yeah got 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 it thank you oh, okay yeah. now okay cool now what we are going to discuss is uh, we will come back here but before that we want to talk about this piece because so far we are saying that okay we will have uh, um, i have a camera so let me actually make it um, yeah so we are saying let's now focus on one let's dissect the use case like at the high level we have seen okay this is how the flow could be but uh, what about the detail as in the low level design right so i have this camera and uh, let me see if i 
yeah actually i have it so uh, this is uh, the power bi the final report right and this is again right now it is uh, getting fed from the uh, cosmos tv from where uh, you are getting this but you can integrate it with aws as well like you can have the uh, aws data Uh, visualize this way or if at all there is a i'm sure there would be a visualization service for aws also so that service can be used but if you see here it is right now showing that overall across all the refrigerators i have in those refrigerators i have 48.94% minute made apple and i have uh, 29.79% of unidentified inventory across all the refrigerators that i have and then maza now this is overall it breaks it down that okay now in refrigerator 1 i have uh, 14 unidentified and uh, that different thing so the raspberry pi that i have is actually refrigerator 1 the device id for that is refrigerator 1 and for refrigerator 2 i actually just went into the uh, cosmos tv the no sequel db and added one or two manual records just to have the view over here that's it and at the bottom you have these uh, temperatures of humidity and time uh, sorry uh, humidity versus time and temperature by time so this one has humidity as well as temperature second one has only the temperature now uh, the reason i showed you this first is because i want to now dissect it as in uh, let's go one level further down <laughs> wherein we know that there is a camera which is capturing photographs fine now how does that photo getting converted into a, a prediction like how where is it happening that once i am taking the photo and then how is that photo getting converted to a maza or a minute made or a, oh, sorry how is it getting converted to minute made apple or maza or unidentified who is doing that piece right and here is where we are using iot edge again iot edge is something which is from microsoft but if i go back to the services uh, for aws here if you see there is something called iot green grass so iot green grass here is nothing but it is a uh, similar to iot edge in microsoft now uh, we are not going to talk about the uh, you know the technicalities here we are more going to talk about the concept so that uh, uh, i'm sure it's going to be common across the board we will not talk about the technical terms per se okay so i have a camera and this camera has taken a image okay now this image i need to know uh, what is uh, this image is of like which which particular drink it is if you are talking about drinks over here so for that there is a ml model and you guys understand uh, machine learning model right like uh, understand as in as uh, if i say think of machine learning model as a black box you guys understand what a ml model can do what what is it in concept or any do you guys want me to explain it real quick yeah you can brief it okay okay so basically when i'm saying a model what essentially i'm saying i'm saying that you have trained a piece of code which and it's not just a piece of code it has a lot of things in it but let's think of it let's say there is this piece of code which is trained in identifying whether this is a or b or c so basically you pass it one of these alpha one of these letters and it can tell you whether it is a b or c and this is a very uh, bad example because uh, so let's say it is trained to identify a apple or a mango or something else like some other fruit basically but <clears throat> this black box once you have trained it once a data scientist has trained it then he has given it to me he said you know what 
this is a let's say a container so this is a container which now uh, is which can now which is now trained to identify these fruits so it's like you know what this kid this 6 year old kid is now trained to identify these 10 fruits which means now in his brain you have trained his brain or it could be through self learning uh, when i say trained i literally doesn't mean trained so in case of human being it could be self learning it could be experience it could be uh, uh, what do you call that uh, uh, trainer driven learning anything but somehow you have trained your brain that this is what it is so you you can say this is a 5 year old kid which knows everything now you can ask him anything and he will respond back to you so that five year old kid, uh, kid is nothing uh, but a interface but actual training which has been done is the brain where all things are trained similarly here there is a piece of code which is trained but if i have to send a image and need to know what this image is according to this code i need to have a way to interact with this code so there are couple of ways in which this code can be hosted when i say this code i'm talking about a machine learning model so either you can host machine learning model as a api endpoint so what is happening in that case you at the end of the day get a url and <clears throat> you make a call to that url and you pass the image that you have as your uh, body basically request body and uh, you will get a response with the prediction so one way of doing that is you are hosting your image in the cloud which means it is being uh, your model in the cloud ml model in the cloud you are going to get a end point you will hit that end point to get your predictions second way of hosting a ml model is in a container so when you want to host it in a container you dockerize it you generate a docker image you create a docker image of it and now you can host that container even on the device so do you guys know what is uh, uh, what is the beauty of container or what is this container concept yeah perfect so now uh, because that container will have its dependencies that it uh, it requires it has a minimal dependency on the hosting platform per se so you can have that container running on your device also so what is happening in this case in this case i have a camera which is taking pictures and then i have a machine learning model ml model which is trained to identify or rather classify these drinks now this is being hosted on the device and it's being hosted as a container image so this camera is taking the picture making a call to this particular guy to get the prediction back and it is let's let's quickly have a look okay this is the one so <clears throat> so basically uh, there is this guy called camera capture which is capturing the uh, images and then there is this guy inventory classification which is a machine learning model but it is something which is going to be dockerized and uh, if you see it has uh, like uh, docker file so if we will dockerize it we will create a container image and that is the image which will finally go to the device but uh, let's we will not go into the code only thing i want to show you is the communication that is happening so if i come over here right uh, in the camera module only part i want you to see is that this is where the camera has taken the image fair enough after taking the image what it is doing is it is making a call to this url now what is this url this url is nothing but it because both this camera module and that inventory classification both of them are the containers running on the same device so this is nothing but the name of that container image by which we are running this inventory classification module so 
it is making a call to this guy at this port and the api route classify now if i go to inventory classification and uh, if i go over here you will see that we are exposing port number 8080 and if i go to app pi there you will see that we have a route called classify so what i am essentially doing over here is fairly easy thing wherein just taking the image and after taking the image making the call to machine learning model which is hosted as a docker container in the same device so i am making that call to the classify route which is defined in that ml model and then what that ml model is gonna give it's gonna give me response back and as part of the response it is telling me the prediction so in the response it it is receiving the image after receiving the image it is running it through uh, its uh, algorithm to do the classification and finally it is giving me response in which it has the tag name and the prediction tag name like whether it's maza versus minute meet versus unidentified in prediction what is the percentage of confidence it has if you just quickly observe here after getting the prediction we are also putting that particular image in the big data store of azure in the blob store and uh, like I mentioned earlier, right? We are putting the image name. So the same image name that we are putting in the blob with the same image name, we are making a message. So we are saying, okay, this is the device ID. This is the image name. This is the tag Maza or MinuteMate. This is the probability and type is analytics. And I want to send this particular message to the cloud. So this is how we are sending here. And if the same thing I have to do in AWS, right? If I, uh, not the edge part, but at least sending the message and all. So that is something also we saw that in AWS, you will send that message something like this, wherein you will publish to the topic. Okay, so I'll not go into the code because uh, in, I, I showed you just uh, to show the communication between the two modules, but let's come back over here. So what is essentially happening i if i go back to the ppt and uh, i want to come to this one okay now what is happening here is we have this left hand side which is the raspberry pi now inside the raspberry pi or in this case it is raspberry pi but in real world it could be some other device also which would be there in the refrigerator but we have four different modules running. So one is a camera module, which is responsible for capturing the images whenever door opens. Second is the ML model, which is the uh, model that can classify the images. And third one is the sensor model. The sensor model is taking the sensor data from various sensors and then building a message and sending it. So the Pi camera model is responsible for capturing the image, sending that image to ML model. After it receives the response, construct a message with the image name, the response, the tag, the probability, and send it to the cloud. Also store the image in the cloud in the big data store. So that is the responsibility of Pi camera, ML model, container images fairly simple responsibility when i say fairly simple it is the most complex to build in but if you think of its responsibility it is as simple as it has to predict whether this image what is this image is it uh, uh, maza minute mate pepsi cola what it is so uh, it just has to do that classification and give back the results sensor module simply has to generate the sensor data and uh, iot edge module is the module through which it communicates with the iot app so this part on the left hand side is the iot edge part wherein you have all these modules running on the device and why why are we calling it iot edge i can have a code running on the at the end of the day, device is nothing, right? It's a hardware which has, which has a, a memory, a CPU, a compute unit, right? So I can just go ahead, connect to the device and deploy any code. Why am I even giving it a name of called IoT Edge 
so let's actually look at it and this is so amazing that if i if i go to uh, the portal again and uh, let me go to the iot hub to which uh, this is connected uh, this is place so this if you see inventory mon is the iot hub i go to this iot hub and like in aws right you we have to register the devices similarly in azure iot also you have to register devices and it has two categories iot devices and iot edge so in aws if you see here itself you have iot core and iot green grass in case of azure you have a single iot hub service inside the same service you have both the options so in this case i'll go to iot edge because like i said the raspberry pi device is the iot edge device and if i select this raspberry pi right you will see that um, it has all the information in terms of it is running a camera capture module it is running a inventory classification it is running a sensor data now what is even more amazing if tomorrow i say you know what i have retrained my ml model and now i have to deploy a new image i have to deploy a latest version of my ml model for inventory classification i have 50000 devices on the field they are at different locations to do this deployment to do to push the latest image all i need is i need to create a new deployment wherein i have to select the version that i want to push and i have to put that new image somewhere which is called azure container registry from where iot hub can read basically but essentially you can manage these different containers to all the devices which is on the field from this one single place which is in the cloud it is so amazing because it gives you so much control now if i let's say i'm talking about this inventory classification right i say you know what i have to push the latest image and this one is not the latest image so i have to give the image uri over here and once i give the image uri i click next 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 and it will create a deployment and this particular new image will be pushed to the device now obvious question would be how will this happen like how how is it going to happen the way it happens is the answer is right here this iot edge so basically whenever you want your device to be a iot edge device you have to install on the device something called iot edge runtime and what happens is if if your device has iot edge runtime then on the device you will have something called edge agent this would be running on your device now what will happen this edge agent is continuously talking to iot hub behind the scenes and this edge agent to to install it after installing it you have to provide it your device id also now this edge agent knows that okay i am the agent for device id 1 it is it's like a regular outlook agent or any other agent right so it is a agent which is continuously talking to iot hub whenever you create a new deployment request because this is continuously checking for all those things it will quickly find it will check okay there is a new request for me so it gets that deployment related information as part of that information it will get the image uri container image uri once it got the uri it goes to that particular uri and it it starts downloading that image once it has downloaded the image then it will start that particular container so this agent is responsible for the communication which is happening behind the scenes with the iot hub and it will keep the things up and running as in it will keep those things uh, your uh, um, any new deployment coming in or any new version of your model that you want to put in all those things will be taken care by the edge agent we um uh, 
like i'm not sure but it is uh, totally based on the interest but uh, if if there are guys who are interested in let's say uh, going in deep with iot programming or going in deep with iot edge programming which is the next level of iot programming i think they there uh, right now there is not but there could be a cert, uh, separate uh, you know uh, separate training material planned for it so uh, right now what we focus more on is to give you guys a complete overview but it doesn't have any hands on at this point of time because that is completely it iot in itself is a complete training wherein you you get to do lot of hands on you get to build all these resources you get to build your own device you can simulate your own device um, from your machine and so on but uh, then as part of those things you will get to do you will get to build these images push those images to the agent uh, to the device and so on right now i don't think we have any such, such course maybe in future they they might plan to but yeah uh, iot itself is a quite a big topic and uh, uh, there are so many flavors that you will get when i say flavors what i mean is you might have a scenario wherein your devices are all time connected and all time able to talk to internet you might get get into a scenario wherein your devices are very low power devices so they can connect only one hour each day or they can connect only one hour in five days or think of the third scenario wherein you don't have a predictability so uh, i don't know if if you guys are using the smart watches right um, maybe a uh, uh, i watch or any other watch from any manufacturer so let's say your watch is also sending telemetry data about your heart rate or whatever it is capturing right the messages coming in and so on so it is your data related to your personal health or your personal uh, stuff which it is sending to the cloud and you have a nice mobile app using which you can do the analysis now in this case your watch is not going to be always on right it would discharge and you will charge it and you will put it back again so many times you will leave it discharged for days and days like uh, either you forget or you start using uh, different watch so basically then the pattern the frequency at which your device is going to connect is not something which is predictable in this case it it really varies then there is another variation wherein you might have the devices <clears throat> which are always connected but they are connected using the sim card and they are movable devices so let's take example of car so they might go into a territory where is no network or let's say they might go in the low power mode but the cloud have a option to wake up that device so in the car if i want to say okay i should be able to remotely start my car essentially what i'm trying to say i'm saying my car is turned off i literally my it's uh, key off my car is currently key off and i want to start it remotely so in those cases the device which is sitting inside the car is also in the low power mode and then you call it wake up sms which you send to the car that will bring your device on and then it can start communicating with the cloud so you have so many flavors but uh, uh, oops but if in this particular case that that we discussed today right uh, it's a very very simple scenario it's a very simple wherein you are just uh, uh, trying to communicate with the cloud you are trying to say it does not have any cloud to device communication as yet all we talked about is device to cloud we were sending sensor data we were sending analytics data and our analytics is happening on the device itself based on that data we are generating some reports and those reports we are showing in the power bi so it's a very very plain scenario but then the advanced scenario also talk about cloud to device message like uh, uh, someone mentioned right if the door is open then i want to send a notification that is one thing like if i leave my door open for more than 5 minutes fine more than 5 minutes i want to send a notification that notification could be a email or sms what about i say okay notification is fine but there is a small 
buzzer on the door so if door is open for more than 5 minutes i want this buzzer to be turned on so now for turning this on if this 5 minute value now think of it right if i say if it is always open for more than 5 minute i want to turn on this buzzer do you really need a iot for that because this is a static decision right i can just program it in the device wherein i can say okay whenever door is turned on using the sensor data the moment it goes beyond 5 minutes just blow up the buzzer it's very similar to in your cars or in your bikes you have this um, uh, service indicator right i'm not sure but i think that is pretty static like it's based on the number of kilometers that okay if, uh, you have Uh, cover these many kilometers then it should turn up or so on so it's kind of a static sensor if it is always fixed on 5 minutes how about i have a very mature system i am receiving telemetry data from across india from my all shopkeepers or vendors about for how long the fridge is usually open so based on that in the cloud i have a analytics which is running on top of that data and that analytics service has created what is the maximum time and what is the minimum time in last one year for which the fridge door was open just hypothetical scenario i'm i'm uh what i'm trying to call out is that uh, how things uh, uh, change by bringing in the iot and ai now instead of keeping it to 5 let's say they, this is something which is a uh, uh, a cultural related stuff what do i mean by that now uh, in a particular part of india in some specific states let's say people uh, culture or uh, not really culture but habit let's say they are habitual wherein they are little bit lazy when uh, lazy whenever they are working they are always talking as well so usually they have seen a pattern that okay you know what usually in this part if your device is in these states usually every time the fridge opens the average time is 1 minute while in a other part the average time of uh, between fridge open and close is only 20 seconds so now rather than i'm putting a limit the same yardstick everywhere because when my fridge is coming out of manufacturing unit i don't know where it will it go it might go to region a and then maybe that shopkeeper returns it because he is closing down the shop or he is moving to a different franchisee it comes back to me now the same fridge is going to region b right so you you really don't know don't know where the device will be deployed when it comes out of manufacturing unit i don't want to keep it keep the same yardstick for everybody i rather want it to be smart i want it to be more behavior driven i want to drive it based on where it is sitting right now if it is in my house it will behave the way i the people in that house want it to be and if it is in a different house it will start behaving in a different way so i want that kind of a smartness with that that will come only and only if you have the iot around it like one way of achieving it is having iot around it so in the very similar situation uh, it's a very simple example right after how much duration i should start the buzzer now if at all there is if let's say instead of 5 minute i keep it to 1 minute just hypothetically and now there is a place wherein people are usually they are if if i'm uh, i don't i don't know for it it might not be a very good example but somehow culturally the average time or the, because of habits the average time of uh, keeping the fridge open is 1 minute 15 seconds let's say there it would be so much annoying so now all that thing would be driven by the behavior of people where my refrigerator is, is installed number 1 number 2 it will also give you lot of insight because these fridge right even today like locally if you see in my fridge temperature is, is still something which is there because there are some cut offs and so on so it has a temperature sensor i know that but what is the 
आउटपुट ऑफ द टेम्परेचर सेंसर इज कंज्यूम्ड बाय द फ्रिज एज इन दिद इन द फ्रिज बाय द कूलिंग मोटर और वट एवर इट इज राइट इट इज कंज्यूम्ड विद इन देयर एंड देन इट इज गॉन दैट्स इट इंस्टेड ऑफ दैट वट दिस विल अलाउ मी इट विल अलाउ मी टू सेंड दैट डेटा ऑन टू द क्लाउड ए डब्ल्यू एस आईओ डी गूगल आई मीन एज योर गूगल वेर एवर इट इज बट दैट सेंसर डेटा हूज लाइफ वॉज वेरी वेरी शॉर्ट लिव अंटिल नाउ इज नाउ अवेलेबल टू यू ऑन द क्लाउड एंड यू कैन डू मैजिक्स विद दैट लाइक वंस यू हैव दैट कैंड ऑफ डेटा वी वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द uh this uh, refrigerator for shopkeepers and all right forget about it for think of the fridge that you have at your house so now technology is moving in that direction at least i've seen a lot of smart fridges come in wherein you can use a mobile app to control certain stuff over there right but like uh, uh if all this data if even if you don't think from end user perspective even if all these refrigerator data is going to the manufacturer be it lg samsung or anybody else right they can get so much insight out of it they will know okay like when if a fridge is not working if it is going to the service center they have the telemetry of that fridge with them for last 6 months one year it can help them identify so many issues it can help them make future fridges much better based on the telemetry of the past fridges so it can help revolution in in a big way this is we focused a lot on fridge refrigerator but now i want to give you another dimension of it everything remains exactly the same like there is a camera camera is taking photo after taking the photo it is doing some analytics and then it is talking to sending data to iot and so on i am just changing the scenario forget about refrigerator part think of uh, a construction site or or a place where uh, it's like where in security is important now what how do i define security let's say for me security is within this premise you should not be talking over your phone within this premise you should always be wearing a helmet within this premise you should always be wearing a vest it could be different rules right i have these rules i want to enforce it i keep everything the same but the model the classification model that i have trained i train it to identify those security breaches so i train my model with people wearing helmet versus people not wearing helmet i try to train my model with people uh, keep holding their uh, cell phones to their ear and so on right now i might have to install multiple cameras like in a fridge i might go at a way with two three camera but when it comes to a premise depending on how big the premise is i might have to install multiple cameras but then cameras are taking continuous continuous pictures there uh, in the fridge it was like only when door opens and closes but in that case it might be taking continuous pictures one picture every 2 second or 5 second and that picture is going to the similar classification model which is trained for classifying whether somebody is breaking that particular those rules or not and accordingly it will give a result and based on the result you can do so much you will send that result to the cloud now in the cloud if my result is coming as somebody is breaching that rule i can blow up a siren i can make a announcement i can send a email to supervisor but and then at the end of the day i can have a nice dashboard report again saying that you know what these many percentage of people broke this rule on day 1 day 2 day 3 why why do i need to have this report actually most of these reports are used to kind of incentivize good there is a uh, there is a study uh, in neurology neuroscience which says that if if you try to enforce something with a scare our body rather than trying to do it goes in a defensive mode so it's like uh, if there is an animal even if it's a lion right if you do something which is really scary if you suddenly make a very loud noise or something the instinctive reaction is 
running away same as with us as human beings if somebody tries to scare us if if somebody smokes and you say you know smoking kills you so there is a study which says that smoking kills you telling them smoking kills you puts them in a more defensive cell wherein rather than trying to quit they start thinking of the way okay you know my grandpa great great grandpa smoked for so many years nothing happened and so on they they go into that mode so some those kind of sciences are known to all these companies big companies ceos and all right now they want these kind of data so that they can build a nice incentivization they can build a nice incentives around it and then they really want to track that okay now i have incentivized this i want to see if this is making any change am i making any progress in terms of people who are no longer uh breaching those rules so initially on day one if it was 50% now okay from month to i have brought in this nice incentive that if uh you never break this rule you will get something let's say some coupon or something am i seeing any change so these iot scenarios help enforcing uh, uh like uh, the solutions that you build with iot they can help you in this space also so it's like uh, uh, not just manufacturing not just automobile like when i say automobile mobile i mean autonomous cars and so on anywhere where even if you don't have a device like in this case right uh, or let's say in this case there in airports you have cameras and uh, with the cameras there might be people who are sitting in a control room monitoring those images and all now can i build some analytics models which can take care of their job like as in when i said their job i didn't what i mean is ki whatever they are doing can it do that automatically and based on that can it also send data to the cloud on that i can retrain that model further so that we can make it more and more finer all these various scenarios around you can be uh, can be you know translated into the iot kind of scenarios and lot of industry the big the biggest part right now which is moving marching towards iot is manufacturing you might have heard about it industrial iot where in industrial standard 4 and lots and lots of manufacturing units what they want to do is they want to ensure as much data whether it is predictive maintenance or whether it is uh, controlling their different pipelines in the manufacturing unit based on the sensor data that the devices are sending they i and this is not um, hypothetical one there is a manufacturing plant i think it's in uh, northeast side somewhere wherein they are absolutely doing a project for no touch factory and literally they mean no touch as in it is 100% automated all using iot and iot edge and the moment you say iot edge of course ai will also come into play because you have to build a lot of models around it but that is the kind of revolution uh, this particular concept is bringing in so i'll take a pause uh, for questions or any thoughts that you want to share or if there is any specific thing you want me to uh, go in detail now uh, the very question is like since we are talking about azure right mm -hmm. and uh, let's say we have built that type of scenario the scenario which you have been uh, showing us as a refrigerator yeah yeah things were now let's say if i have to migrate to another cloud vendor so how that can be a possible yeah so and you know that's a very interesting point actually i remember being in uh, one of the discussion wherein uh, that i i won't take the name of the customer and all but what they were saying that you know what we are doing this in azure but at the same time i also want to know uh, if tomorrow i want to shift it to google cloud or aws i want to have design in such a way that that migration should be very very smooth for me so if we talk about the same thing right wherein you have a device and you have this azure cloud and there is a aws cloud 
now if you are building a solution which you want to say you know it should be as good as i can do this versus this so i should be able to plug and play if you are going there then of course you have to have a, a kind of a interface created of your own that would be running in front of the azure or aws service but then the obvious question would be of course that's fine but that interface that i'll create that would also be deployed somewhere right so that uh, either you have to at the end of the day deploy that to one of the cloud so that is one thing wherein you have to do a lot of custom coding unnecessarily just because you think in future you might have to do that second is do when situation arises so if at all i have built a full fledged solution the same that we uh, try to build right now and i say now i want to move it to the aws so first thing first you provision the resources as part of your resource provisioning you create a aws iot core uh, you create your notification service dynamo db you create all those resources that you need then the first thing that you have to migrate over is your device registration not the actual devices yet you have to register all your devices in aws iot core because until you register those devices there you won't be able to communicate your device won't be able to communicate to aws now you have registered all the aws devices and then i'm not going into the data migrate because all the historical data that you have uh, received in azure right all that data all is also something that you would like to move to aws but that is something which is pretty standardized right data migration part is something that can be easily taken care so now i have all my devices here that is great which means now a device should be able to talk to the aws but device right now which is talking to iot of course has a url right which is the url it is using so if i if i come back here and uh, let's uh, did, 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 uh, where is the yeah A, for example the aws right so at the end of the day uh, this is the url that i need for connecting to my aws similarly for iot hub also there is a url that you need so uh, yeah let it come uh, i'll show you that url but uh, the point is that device has a url which is uses to connect to a particular service in this case it is right now connecting to iot hub now moving the devices to the aws creating uh, provisioning new resources in the aws migrating the historical data all that has no business impact in the continuity because i am still continuously uh, my business is running with iot hub right the moment i say now i want to make a switch which means i want this device to connect to this guy for that my device needs aws uri now there are 50000 devices sitting right let's say 50000 1 lakh devices sitting and uh, uh, if if somebody says you know what we will go there and physically change the url of the device like somebody goes to the device use the laptop as engineer connect to the device uh, engineer of that particular uh, company and uh, we scheduled visits to all the refrigerators where you have to go and do that it would be a very very bad solution as in it will take lot bad in the sense duration would be really high uh, time taken uh, would be high the cost would be high Uh, you have to travel so many places engineers manpower and so on right so of course that's not a good solution so what should we do so if at all i think that okay or even if i don't think that i have to move it in future but i want to make my system extensible that if tomorrow any such sol- uh, situation arises then i know that cloud part is something which is not a big deal to take care of because this is all some uh, something that i can take care by uh, building resources and migrating data and so on and it has no business impact uh, i am doing it in parallel while system is already running on azure and once it is provisioned i want to do a cut over so what there is a uh, one of the design that we uh, used uh, which was kind of uh, giving you a capability wherein you are no longer your hard your devices no longer have a 
hard core dependency on this particular url as in uh, it doesn't have to remember it it doesn't have to keep it uh, uh, burnt on the chip so in that case what we did was we created a api and whenever device turns on whenever device comes online it will always make call to this api and this api will give it back the uri it should connect to and this is simply reading it from the database nothing fancy now whenever you register a device in the iot hub you also go and update in the database the new uri so this device now uh, is getting the uri and then it is trying to connect to the cloud it could be a iot hub it could be a aws iot depending on the uri which is coming back so what you will do in this case is you will register your devices you will update the database and then you will bring down this iot the moment you bring down the iot hub all the devices will error out and disconnect and then they will try to reconnect and it's not only the first time it will go here the the way we handled it is if there are five errors five uh, continuous uh, uh, connection errors then also it should try to go and check the new uri uh, if at all there is a new uri so it will go it will get the uri from here now in this case i don't have to go to any single device all that is something i have kind of handled as part of my initial design wherein rather than hard coding those things onto the device i am taking care of uh third person in between which is again a service hosted in the cloud which is my api service i created and device is always making a call to this guy to get the uri so i change the mapping in the back i bring it down and then it should get the new uri and it should start connecting to through aws uh, does that answer your question or yes yes i got okay any other questions Uh, I have one question. Like yeah. uh, now, again, uh, the hardware is connect depending on the another hardware, like uh, camera or sensor or anything, right? So, uh, other than this, like say, I have some scanner or something. Okay, considering the hospital uh, uh, scanners. Yeah, yeah. So where I whatever the scan images uh, are produced every day or every uh, scan. Correct. So I just want you said some agent will be installed in the machine, right? Right. If you are using edge, yes. Uh, that's a what is that? Uh, uh, if you are using IoT edge, so yeah. Uh, yeah, then there will be a IoT edge agent running on the machine. Yeah. Yeah. So without, I mean, using any other hardware like uh, maybe camera or sensor or anything. is it possible to directly uh, connect to the io uh, iot hub band and do stuff so yeah yeah, yeah. as station. long as your as long as your devices so you know uh, qualcomm is coming up with this. so initially it was like okay if if you think of airport again i am coming back to that example where you have these cameras installed and those cameras are sending the feed and then there is a, let's say a server room on which that video is being played right and people are monitoring those videos to see if there are any threats or something now qualcomm has come up with the cameras which are uh, uh, capable of running iot edge so okay. these uh, uh, analytics uh, ml models is something which which takes uh, compute and memory right because of course we are saying that i'm going to run analytics so initially you're like for an running the analytics you need big servers but now what we are saying if your device is capable if it meets the criteria of the compute that you need for running that uh, particular ml model then you can have it running on the same device it can be running on the camera itself also you don't need any other device to connect to it as long as it has the capability to talk to internet it can send that data directly so you need what i think of car right that's the best example in this case in yeah. the car you have so many sensors there is a speedometer there could be if you are talking about like a, a very latest and greatest models there would be sensor for your tire pressure as well there will be of course sensor for your fuel uh, tank right uh, how much is the fuel and so on and whether you have put in the seat belt or not because you get a, a notification on the dashboard so you have so many sensors now if all these sensors start behaving as individual devices then it would be a mess 
it would be a high cost investment because now every single small sensor has to have the capability to connect over internet second once you have all that data in the cloud actually that is part of the same car that is a physical boundary but if each one of them are sending the individual messages you will be increasing your cost your data and your headache instead of that you have one device in the car which is capable of talking over internet and all these sensors are connected to that particular device using can bus so all these sensors are sending their data to that device and that device is making one single message putting data from all the sensors and sending it to the cloud representing that i am this particular car but at the same time you are right in saying that this is a example of an enclosed physical environment but like in a hospital wherein there might be a device which is moving around a scanner or something else which is moving around from one patient room to another patient room even as part of ambulance let's say so there that could also be treated as a individual device as long as it is capable of talking over internet if it is not capable of talking over internet there is another option that you have where in and you would have seen lot of devices what it does is it keeps those data let's say a scanner is a scanning 10 doing 10 scans throughout the day so what it will do it will keep that data stored locally and then that data can be taken out through a usb cable and then you have uh, let's say a small nice dashboard application through which you can upload it to the cloud so th- these are various uh, solutions for those kind of devices but yeah you have that variation as well yeah got got yeah got okay any other question uh, any devices like iot devices i'm not aware so just to keen to ask like uh, devices which are a proper battery of like a, Four years, five years later. Uh, you know, uh, there is a there is a very nice. Um, let me share that link. They have uh, done a quite a good job. Uh, catalog. Uh, Azure. What they have done, they have created a IoT device catalog, and in that. they have also created it on a scale especially when it comes to edge they have created it on a scale from left to right wherein the most powerful devices on the right and least powerful devices on the left but uh, let me okay i have just pasted this link so it has a list of uh, all the iot devices and here you see there is a option of Azure IoT Edge, which is like Edge certified. So these are all the devices in which you can have IoT Edge as well. So and you can, if at all, let's say you are going into a project, right, wherein somebody is saying, okay, this is a device we're going to use. So you can quickly search if it is a, a certified device and all. So it's a it's a good link to have basically uh, with the device catalog. Yeah. Okay, so if I want to start a career in uh, IoT analytics or big data analytics with IoT, uh, mm-hmm. is there any programming language or programming uh, foundation like Node Red or Node Node JS? What kind of uh, background should I have if I need to yeah. be strong in the technology, the tech yeah. stack? Now, first thing is uh, you the two terms that you use, right? uh you need not to go them uh, go together for them so you mentioned uh, uh big data iot big data analytics right now iot and okay. analytics they are so you have iot and you have analytics and big data is usually covered as part of it so iot resp- if you are making your career in iot right then you are kind of specializing in the device communication getting that data and putting it in a big data store that's it your job ends there you you dump it in the big data store you are done but you are building the entire pipeline of the communication from device until this point and if at all there is any communication which is to the device that is also you are taking care of now if you are trying to build a career in big data and analytics then lot of times the iot guy will ask you that you know what this is my volume of data this is the kind of mix i have and uh, 
you tell me which is the right big data store for me so you will you will decide that and then on top of that you will do the analytics now let's come the reason i want to uh, keep that segregation very clear is that uh, sometimes your interest might be just this area or this area so you need not to mix them together they in individual are very big fields as of today right now there is like uh, even if you are specialized in just one of them and has the basic idea of the other just the basic idea you are pretty solid so they in themselves can sustain you now when it comes to programming language right when we talk about analytics part especially analytics there uh, you uh, if you go with so uh, the like data bricks is uh, something which is coming up Uh, very nicely when it comes to the analytic services so there you need if you know scala or python so python is actually if you are going in analytics python is one language that uh, you should definitely have a grasp of uh, most of your uh, data science related stuff happens in python so uh, if you go and do python i think you should be good and uh, <laughs> if you talk about iot i think as of today uh, like if i say if i talk about azure specifically right uh, for most of the services there are options for c sharp node js python uh, java these are these are mostly available in all the services so as long as you know python this part would be covered i was a c sharp engineer for lot of uh, for a big part of my career right but the moment you try to enter this space there the c sharp and all won't work because uh, won't work as in one uh, the the libraries are coming in now for the analysis and all but uh, the thing is of course you have dot net framework so your processing time and all would be more in that so this space is mostly all your numpy or uh, i don't recall other ones but uh, most of that is python because python has really good libraries for the uh, analytics especially for the maths python has awesome libraries that's why a lot of python is used in this space uh, does it answer your question Yeah, Or, thank you. Okay. Uh, I have, I have pointed. Like, what about machine learning lab, sir? Yeah, yeah. So, if you want to make a career in machine learning, right? With all my experience, uh, I work with lot of data scientists and all. Uh, machine learning in itself is. Uh, I would suggest you to go for a proper. Uh, like I think there are six months or two year courses as well, because. as part of machine learning you need to go through the statistics all over again your data structure algorithm statistics and then on top of that you will start building the machine learning foundation i mean that is a foundational work for machine learning and on top of that you will start building the algorithms and all so uh, when it comes to language again python is what i have seen being used most for machine learning there another competitor is r but uh, if you if i recall correctly the market capture of r was a little bit higher than python but the way uh, python was making progress in the recent years uh this is where most of the people are going but you can either go with r or python these are the two options that you have and uh, if you are serious about building a career in ml that would be uh, you would have to invest time and wherein as i said like if if you meet, if you meet any data scientist right lot of people say okay if you are a true data scientist you will hold a phd degree and all but there are a lot of very good courses which are coming um, from mtech as well uh, and there are some nice courses by the institutes which are for 6 months which actually takes you from basics again revise your statistics data structure and then on top of that they teach you the uh, machine learning so that's how in my opinion you should take it i mean I, with ml i don't think the shortcuts would help like when i say shortcut what i mean is uh, just learning language and doing a very quick course might not help you so from language side python or r and uh, then 
try to look for a course which covers the basics as well as the advanced part of it any any other question but they all are interdependent right uh yeah so that's the beauty right uh, when you said they all you mean the iot big data machine learning analytics that's what you mean yeah 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 you are absolutely right so uh that's what the thing there are so much interdependent that unless you have iot which is getting you lot of sensor data you won't have enough data to build a ml model now i have a iot scenario but i don't have a model to take decisions it would be more like just gathering the data for me so they are truly interdependent with with each other but uh this complete pipeline is actually dissected when it comes to specialization so you can literally be just uh, i and forget even iot specialized today if you look at the market right you will find very nice high salary paid positions for just iot device security engineer that is focused on the security for your device with the iot scenario so similarly from the analytics side uh, you have this big data and basic analytics piece and then comes the a data scientist part which is more related towards machine learning so your simple analytics could be like you know uh, based on the big data you might be modeling and then you are creating some nice reports you are making some uh, by making some graphs you are taking some decisions and that, that kind of analytics but when you talk about machine learning in the machine learning now you are talking about taking that decision also as part of your ml model so but yeah you are right they are all related if you take one out of the equation the weightage of other two in a real world end to end scenario might go drastically down like if i take a machine learning out of a iot scenario my output or my roi might be much lesser than what it would be with a machine learning if i take out iot from somewhere i am trying to build a machine learning model my roi might be much lesser because i might not be getting lot of data for training and all any any more questions but how the, how, how how the pressure decides like which field he has to start right yeah yeah no that's so um, basically see if uh, i'll i'll give you some idea uh, on the three if uh, something that uh, uh, like a business uh, problem right if you are very much influenced by okay uh, how how do i solve this business problem how how exactly when i say business problem i mean a real time business pro- problem not a logical problem wherein it's not about uh, writing a code and trying to find out a ro- logical pr- issue it's more like if you are very much towards i want to understand this domain as a business then machine learning might be a field which which might interest you because uh, the data scientist that are there one of the key part of it is to understand the business because as a, as a data as iot data i might be getting five four fields but unless i know that domain i won't be able to define that out of these four only two should be impacting the outcome for this particular problem so you need to have that domain expertise for this piece and if you are interested if if that interests you then this is something you can definitely try when it comes to the iot that is more about scale and trust me if uh, uh, it's like whatever we discussed right now right that was a very basic scenario but even if it is a complex scenario the the motivation for delivering iot scenario won't be through how many services are there how much code no it would be how well can i performance tune it at the end of the day in 90% of the iot scenarios it comes down to okay i have 1 million devices i have 50 million devices how do i performance tune my system so it goes to that extreme programming wherein you have to really try to see at every level where can i bring it down so if you are like too much into coding and that is what motivates you most and that 
to going into too much depth maybe you could be a iot architect iot system engineer iot cloud engineer so many positions are there analytics part is kind of a little bit of both the words because in 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 terms of analytics of course you need to know the business part of it because when you are trying to build the report and all but with analytics usually what happens is business will tell you okay this is the kind of reporting i want this is the kind of view that i want now they are the one who will tell you all those things and based on that you will do manipulation on the data you will do transformation on the data and then you will finally try to build that kind of view while in case of data scientist you will have that domain knowledge so you will get the raw data you will massage it you might have a help of somebody from big data team who can massage the data but you will be taking decisions that okay out of these fields these are the five i think are of most importance let's try with them first and so on uh, and you know with all honesty i don't think like if if you are fresher you can immediately choose between these three because in yourself i i'm sure you won't have that kind of clarity within yourself in terms of uh, uh which one you want to do but one thing i can tell you except for ml part if i leave this one because like i said this is a very specialized thing between these two you can very easily move around like if you know this it won't it's not like that uh moving here is a fairly easy thing for you or vice versa yeah this is again like i said is something which is um, uh, which requires a lot more specific learning so it's not like okay if i know iot pretty good i can very easily take a project as a someone who will design an ml model no uh, that is a specialized uh, knowledge that you have to acquire but yeah between these two you can take one project on iot next project you can ask for a big data related stuff and you should still be able to quickly learn and do it and all three of them are niche right so yes terms. yes absolutely <laughs> absolutely that's true yeah, exactly. so you know i did my first iot project in 2014 at that time there was no iot hub or anything we we built it with all custom design but since then uh, i mean that is uh, uh, since that time the way people so iot the reason i mentioned that is like in 2014 and it was a very large scale iot project but since then the flavor of the iot projects which i have been working with i haven't seen any iot project in last one year in which uh, machine learning is not involved every single project in 2018 that i did has a flavor of machine learning in it so uh, although they are niche but somehow they are becoming more and more uh, like within iot itself people are putting in even latest and greatest components together but yeah all three of them are something which yeah, in terms of technology as they are niche in terms of uh, market like if, if you as uh, if you want to join a company as and as a return of investment if you think right then also i think all of them are pretty uh, paid like pretty nicely this one being highest as far as i know the ml part like data scientist position but even the uh, business uh, like analytic big data and iot both are being paid pretty nicely yeah i have a question here like so yeah. you mentioned that no it can be uh, so definitely we are understanding the uh, we are participating in courses and no mm -hmm. get enhance our career and you know get get better paid right yeah yeah but but how the cost will reduce for iot devices and other things because since we are up to definitely when we been paid for how the things will work right how how the solution will be cheaper right since in the beginning you mentioned right the, the yeah 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 okay that, right got it got it so, so, so how the solution will be get cheaper right it should be yeah right. yeah so that that ownership lies on the hardware engineers uh, hardware engineers as in oem so basically th see this is all everybody is every industry is evolving now part of the iot's device that is agreed but as a iot cloud architect or engineer or developer you don't have you can't 
uh, do a lot about device because that is again hardware engineering in itself is like embedded electronics and all that is a skill set which is needed for the device but there are engineers who are doing that and that industry is also evolving so whenever we build a iot solution right we don't take decisions on which device to use only thing we can take decision is this is the feature that i need this is the data i want my device to send me now who is the right guy to say okay for this data this kind of data that you need this should be the right device this is the cheapest device this is the best performing device that is somebody who has the mastery in the hardware so there are oems which are manufacturing these devices and as a company you will reach out to those oems with your requirement and that oem will be the one who will tell you that this is what the cost would be for uh, coming to the point about uh, cost reduction think of a time when computers were so expensive right or uh, think of mobile phone like um, apple is a exception but all other mobile phones that you talk about look at the smartphone cost today versus what it was like maybe 10 year back so hardware industry is also revol- uh, there is a revolution going on there it it is happening in every industry but the devices the cost of devices i kind of agree with you partially that in lot of scenarios that could be too much uh, as of today but i'm pretty sure because uh, most of the big companies want to move towards iot not only big companies like even the consumer based products iot is something that now we are talking about we already connected human beings through internet now it is about connecting the devices right so world is moving in that direction i'm sure there is hardware industry which is working behind the scenes and over the time that cost will also come down i mean that is that is the same cycle that happened with other things like computer or mobile phones is going to happen with these devices because that is what will end of the day uh, make your consumption go high consumption of those devices but yeah if if your question was around that how do you bring that device cost down no you can't it is it is uh, you will have those predefined set of devices or you will contact the oem and if you don't have that expertise another thing that in this complete thing right if you don't have an expertise don't be uh, don't make a decision even if you are given that responsibility clearly call it out this, for this you need to talk to a hardware expert which i am not clearly call it out because one is small decision one is small uh, you know wrong decision in these things we are talking about large number of devices right it could have a impact very high impact in terms of cost in terms of your system redesigning and all so uh, you have to have a specialized person from hardware industry to be roped in to make calls on which device should come in for these features which is a low cost device what is the battery life of that device and so on does it answer your question yes yes i got uh, so you know one yeah. quick thing yeah yeah um i know we are well past time but no no that's okay yeah yeah but see um i mean uh, now we are talking about uh, iot and how uh, you know millions of devices actually talk to a particular iot hub and things like that right how do we secure that uh, communication apart from the connection string that we are using yeah so it is all over ssl so all that communication that happens is over ssl so it is all your uh, it is encrypted uh, uh, transport layer that is one but i'll give you another example uh, from one of my past uh, iot project experience although all that is over ssl right so while your message is traveling it is all encrypted which is perfect this is secure but then at the end of the day it is going to hit either your uh, uh, iot hub or it will hit your aws iot in either case from this point onwards it will start its journey within your cloud now in your cloud let's say let's take about aws example right so uh, tell me uh, a message what is the counterpart of event hub if you guys know or any messaging system in the aws so let's say they, we we forward it to dynamo db or somewhere some messaging system 
Now, even this communication is secure. Fair enough. But when the message is sitting over here, or let's say it's simple notification service, right? Now, message is sitting in the simple notification service topic. While it is sitting here, it will be immediately picked up by somebody. Like after all the message in that queue are picked up, it will be quickly picked up and processed. But this is in transit right now. So there are certain customer who says that you know, even when my message is in transit. i want its security i it's okay i understand while it is traveling uh, sorry yeah uh, you call that transit only right while it is traveling i know that this is all secured through ssl but i want to ensure when it is at final destination the final resting place which could be a sequel it could be a dynamo or it could be any other db i want the security here and i want also the security in the in intermittent stores like in transit so one of the customer that i worked for what they did when you create a message right it is a json they encrypted the message payload itself and they have written their own encryption algorithm so they encrypted the message payload so that wherever this message payload is going it is always encrypted and when you have to process it that is when you have to decrypt it but that is like a extreme case other ways if and from azure point of view i can tell you that whether it is sql azure let's say you are using sql azure so azure has a uh, encryption out of box encryption every data that you put in sql is always encrypted so it's the encryption on and you also have a capability wherein you can define your key to encrypt that data but the, from the security point of view whenever it is traveling it is always over ssl so it is always encrypted and safe uh whenever it is at transit yes you might have to do some if at all it is like highly secure data and uh, even within your even though it is in the boundary of your data center in, inside your cloud but if at all you have to do something to make it secure even during the transit then you have to encrypt the message payload which again would be done at the device and in the cloud wherever you are processing the message it has to be decrypted so you need to have and in the in my case that i was talking about every device encryption encryption key was unique so basically as part of device registration as part of device metadata we also have to take care of storing the device encryption keys so that is how uh, you can uh, put additional layer of security okay so so basically over the internet it's only ssl and yes, then um, yes. in the cloud you can have your own uh, ways of encrypting yes so in the cloud basically because one approach is now see one thing you you guys might already be knowing right that uh, as you want the higher security cost and security are proportional directly proportional to each other right, right. now uh, there are some uh, some customers who will say you know what when it is traveling over internet of course i want it to be absolutely secure but when it is making call between your services in the same data center and so on it's okay it's within the cloud i mean there uh, there kind be different different types of variety around it so uh, but the more and more secure you want to make it there are certain iot scenarios wherein user data is involved wherein absolutely you cannot have any uh leave it there it has to be 100% secure there is some iot scenarios wherein this is just anonymized data and uh, you are not too much worried about it there you might you you are only bothered about while it is traveling at rest in transit you know okay it's like couple of seconds life for the message here it's okay we will leave it that way so yeah but all uh, all the communication and uh, in the if i come back here right where we uh if you see this mqtt like uh, you guys said you have gone through it so mqtt 3883 is a secure mqtt right so that's where you are connecting to your um, um in the aws you are connecting to 883 using secure mqtt any other question uh, with respect to artificial intelligence so we talked about machine learning right yeah yeah so the output of this machine learning can be helpful in building the bots all uh, right yes. so like where in uh, you have uh, ibms watson or uh, wipro's home yeah yeah so uh, is my understanding right that okay based on whatever machine learning output we get 
we are able to build the bots actually and that is what actually is the uh, IBM Watson platform or the Wipro's uh, homes platform. Yeah, so uh, that is called like a natural language processing. Let me actually show you. So what I did is uh, uh, like a month back, I had my Raspberry Pi and I built a Alexa-like functionality on this. Uh, and for that, I have actually deployed a bot here and I also had a uh, machine learning model, which is trained. So I again, I won't go in the code, but uh, what I want to show you is exactly what you are... So here, basically, if you see this NLP, natural language processing. So what is this functionality? Basically, in my uh, Raspberry Pi, I had a mic, right? So you you speak to that, like uh, you talk in Alexa. Then I was making a call to the speech to text analytics service, which was translating whatever I have spoken into the text. I get that text back, and then I was making a call to this ML model, which is my NLP model. Now, inside this, actually, what is there? Once it receives the text, right? After that, it has the, this ML model can calculate the intent. So what is intent? This is the training grid. So uh, in the machine learning, you have a standard training data and testing data, right? So if you see in the training data, if I'm saying, say a joke, then intent is ask joke. If I'm saying tell joke, it's still ask joke. So this is the test data wherein I said, these are the various ways in which I can, I want you to tell me the joke. And every time one of that variation comes in, the intent that I'm looking for is ask joke. So my ML model was giving me what is the intent. Now, based on that intent, I have these commands created wherein if my intent is ask joke, it will execute the joke command, which will randomly tell me one of this joke. So uh, this is exactly what you are mentioning, wherein you have this NLP model. And at the end of the day, this NLP model is used for finding out the intent because with the chatbot also at the end of the day, when I'm typing something, I need to find out what is the intent of me? What is that I'm looking for, right? That is where you use that NLP and uh, yeah, you build those models and then, uh, uh, you know, use them uh, in case of, so this is again, this was on IoT edge, but if you, uh, if I have a chatbot, right? So I might have my NLP model running on the cloud and whenever I'm receiving a request, I would be making a call to that and get the response. Yeah, recently there was a video also, right? Which um, I think there was a hologram which uh, translates the language into Japanese yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that was by uh, during the Microsoft Ready event by ah, Satya. Yeah. yeah, so that's right. It was a hologram that from Japanese to English, uh, real time translation. Yeah. yeah, yep. So I think it was built on Microsoft Azure platform. Yep, yep. That is all Microsoft. Yeah. And uh, Sachin, I'm not sure whether this is in the scope. Uh, there were two things actually which I wanted to get clarified. I'm not sure whether uh, yeah. it comes as the whole course also. So mm -hmm. You have the hyperconvergence, right? So you have a Nutanix. Which can, you, can you repeat that? Nutanix, Nutanix, uh, which is hyperconvergence uh, okay. for in cloud. And uh, also you have uh, VBlock and all. Uh, how, how these things are relevant to uh, uh, me or as a person who has taken this course? So, or is it something very different from this? Course? Yeah. So actually, because I am focused only on the Azure part of it. So basically, uh, I, I overall course curriculum, I don't have much of the insight. I know the parts which is uh, specific to Azure. So maybe uh, someone either from like HR department or from AWS side. Yeah, I think from someone from HR department might be the right person to connect you with a guy who has an absolute understanding of the complete course. No problem. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Anyone? I think someone no. was asking. Yeah. yeah. On the anonymization you are telling, right? So yeah. like uh, these are the provided by the cloud provider. So if I have like own my own anonymization or security in between uh, the uh, device and the cloud, mm -hmm. like so yeah, I'm using some module. Is it possible, like before I upload, when I get the uh, data from the device, so I don't want to uh, send the same data to the cloud. So in between, I'll have my own model and then... Uh, Absolutely. Kind of in fact, what you just mentioned 
is one of the use case of iot edge i mean you can have a layer in between so see the way it works is what you are saying is i have a device and yeah. here i have this iot either aws or azure doesn't matter yeah. and in between i have a layer which is doing this data anonymization on the message and then sending the message over here right exactly yeah now here comes two things this is perfectly fine principally but yeah. this layer at the end of the day it would be running somewhere so either it could be running as part of the device which we say it would right. be running on premise right. or i might run it also in the cloud itself right. as another service right now right. if it is this particular box the first right. one yeah. then you can have this as part of iot edge itself you can have one more module which is let's say your etl module you call it and there you are just doing this data anonymization or translation and this is a proper use case if you go to if you search for iot edge go to msdn there one of the use case of for iot edges if you want to do some data manipulation from security perspective or you want to do some data manipulation for some aggregations and so on this is a good fit for you even wow. if you don't want to do iot edge you have created a separate server and right. your device is always talking to that server and that server is sending data to iot this is that is one second is when you deploy this on the cloud only and your device is talking to this guy and then this guy is doing the anonymization so that is the second way of doing it only difference between the two is that in the second case sorry one is in on premises and on is and in yeah so uh, basically when it is in the cloud then all the devices are requesting to the same place and if it is on prem then for every device or all the device in the same premise you have one set so scaling is one part which uh, which is something that uh, uh, differs in both the cases but yeah uh, you are right it can be done and okay. uh, modification in if it is in the first case would be difficult right absolutely Absol if you are using iot edge yeah. then you can do that by pushing it from the uh, iot itself but if you are creating a server let's say i have a linux okay. server yeah. then of course you have to all those physical locations right yeah. some yeah okay and one more last one last question is like uh, you said uh, if the data if i want to send the image which is of like uh, in mb or something yeah yeah uh the it will not a message usually not support more than 256 kb yeah, yeah so you said there is a way to do it or something right yeah yeah so there is they have come up with a feature and this is again specific to azure but uh, in azure they have uh, let me come up with a feature came up with a feature of which is called file upload let me quickly yeah we are here did it Uh, yeah this file upload so they have come up with this feature uh, which allows you to upload these files which are of big size to the cloud but i haven't used it ever uh, instead what i have mostly done in most of the cases uh, that i have done is always use the blob and send those images to the blob and then have a reference of that image in the actual message because your blob and i i think i should have that uh, because i also mentioned that i'll talk about it now uh, the blob right per month it is going to cost me only 1470 rupees that's it the and that is for if i recall it was for 10 gb storage is what i was looking for so it is very very cheap so this is one way file not uh, file upload is one way but then you can also have uh, uh uh a direct call so you can take either approach uh, i'm not sure if there is a similar thing in aws i'm i mean i'm sure but, there would be one but i'm not sure which is exactly what exactly is that called i mean file upload is like uh, direct file upload or it is the part of uh, it's not a part of message right it's separate no it's separate it's yeah message can so a message which is coming to iot hub cannot be more than 256 kb so file upload is again something which iot hub is kind of facilitating in terms of sending some notification and all but it is from device it is directly going to the storage without going through iot hub Uh, in so that like, case then how iot hub will know like we of how the file is yeah it is part of the time yeah it is actually so basically what will happen is uh, 
whenever you will start a file upload right yeah. it it might send a notification to iot hub about a file upload start it is not sending file it is just sending a notification to iot hub it will have some data information right yeah correct no 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 so your data is directly going not to the data, storage data i mean metadata information metadata yeah correct metadata information and then iot hub is kind of uh, uh, knows that okay this is where the okay. file is uploaded yeah. and so on so it is more on that lines that it does it one more thing it uh, does i forgot the name of that feature which is like if you have some uh, uh, some uh, systems some services right and you have the device now you want your device to talk to those services directly let's say you want your device to call a api which is your internal it api in your organization you have a api and you want your device to talk to that guy now how do how does that api authenticate your device so they have come up with something wherein you can register your apis in iot hub and iot hub can also uh, behave as a bridge between the devices and the apis i forgot the name of that feature i recently saw that they have come up with something like this so that's another thing uh, yeah just uh, Yeah, I don't recall that name actually. Okay, so any other right. question? Right. Uh, one quick one, Sachin. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The IoT security specialist. Uh, you know, you did mention about the security. Yes, what, what's, yes. What's so special? Uh, what do they do? Uh, just yeah, just... yeah, yeah. So basically, see uh, when. Uh, when we are so it's like uh, when you have your username and password let's say for your online banking account right now your username and password you might be keeping you you might just remember it you don't put it anywhere else but when it comes to the device now in case of device your uh, whether it is a cert based authentication or it is a key based authentication that is something which is on the device now if somebody gets hang of that device somebody gets that physical device let's say your refrigerator is stolen now if i am dissembling the refrigerator i have that device with me if i can take out that uh, user id password uh from that device then i can mess up with your whole system how i can mess up with your whole system i can throttle it i can just bombard it with the messages and after bombarding the messages your system i can completely throttle it if you have created a system which can take a throughput of 100 message per second i can bombard it with 500 message of that device uh, from that device and that will have a impact on all your other devices so that is one example the other example is if you are when you have this device right so uh, for example i had uh, like in one of our project we whenever we do any project we usually get uh, uh, security so even though a device is something which was uh, ownership of the customer for whom we were doing the project but to ensure that security of our system is intact we actually run through them and the we do a security check from our security engineers of those devices so they said you know what these devices has these many threads the first uh, first security threat of that device was that he said the certificate or the user id password it is keeping those it is not keeping those things in hsm or burnt on the chip so if somebody gets hang of the device they can easily take it out then the customer said you know what these are legacy devices i have no way to have these things in hsm or virtual hsm hsm they will remain that way so because of that we have to build in some additional security in the cloud side because in the device it was weak but you have these specific device engineers to ensure that even if your device is stolen your scope of thread one the first thing nobody should be able to uh, take advantage of it because it is like uh, now think of your phone right phone is at the end of the day a device initially when phone was in the market versus today how much difference has come in terms of security today you can track your phone if it is stolen or there are so many different things right passcode your from fingerprint similarly from device perspective also there are people who can if they steal your device 
how to avoid the scope of the impact they can have on your entire system how can i reduce that scope to only that device how can i further nullify the scope even on that device and if you guys have heard of azure sphere that is something that microsoft product team has came up with they said we have experience of around 1 year in this area and uh, we have experience in software as well as in hardware so we are coming with seven standards of designing iot devices and if you meet these seven standards you will make highly secure easily communicable devices and so on so uh, mostly the work of your uh, azure device engineer is he should be of course be good in embedded systems uh, certificate hsm module hardware security modules and that stuff right and then whenever a certificate is coming how will it be stored how the versioning of that certificate we done uh, how will my different peripheral devices will talk to the central device in a secure fashion if at all encryptions have to be done how will that works all that stuff is something that he will take care of and okay. it, it, it could be a lot more than this i'm just telling you based on my ex uh, understanding from the experience of my communication with them so i i don't have a specialization in the hardware field so i i don't know it could be much beyond this as well but uh, this is something which based on all the conversations that i had so far with them i can tell you yeah. okay so 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 this uh security specialists are more to do with the you know they would be at the oem side or uh, the device manufacturer side uh, uh, oem side oem so basically for example take example of car right now you have a car manufacturer who makes the car but the device the telematics control unit which is fitted inside the car is not made by the car manufacturer that they have given to any other oem that is the oem who is making that device which he will ship to car manufacturer car manufacturer while manufacturing that it is just another part of the car for him so he is getting part of the cars from different different vendors so this guy is one of the vendor and that is the guy who has taken the requirements from the car manufacturer based on that he should have uh, in specialist security guy for this job who will you know do a quality check do ensure that all these things it is not uh, uh, vulnerable uh, to those kind of attacks and so on okay so uh, thanks guys so this brings us to the end of this session so we have successfully understood what iot is how to build iot on cloud platforms and we've actually gone ahead and implemented iot applications on these cloud platforms thank you